why you should procrastinate. The least commercially viable piece of self-help advice ever. Hey, this is Jonathan with Limitless Mindset, and I've got an article to drop on you here with kind of a unconventional sort of mindset that I bring to life and its challenges. I think if you can adopt this mindset selectively, I think it'll pay you back with freedom. So let's dive into the article, which by the way, I've got a cool meme to go along with it. I've got Jay-Z and it says, I got 99 problems, 98 will solve themselves. Sorry about this quick interruption. I've got an important call to action for you. Please go watch this video and subscribe to Limitless Mindset over on one of the alt tech platforms, Rumble or Odyssey. And that is where you can catch my latest videos along with browsing my entire library of content and videos and podcasts. Over 700 pieces of edifying content about biohacking, nootropics, smart drugs, anti-aging, life hacking, about my pragmatic full-spectrum anti-fragility philosophy. If you value health freedom, I urge you to get outside of your digital comfort zone just a little and vote for the kind of future you want with your attention. Join and use the pro free speech social media platforms. I have the links below this video to where you can connect with me on those platforms. I do pay more attention to the comments that I get on those. Please don't procrastinate any further in taking back your freedom and your privacy from big tech. Don't even pause this video. Just pick one of the alt tech platforms. I think that Odyssey is the best. It's kind it's a lot like YouTube. It's as good as YouTube as a video platform, but there's no annoying ads interrupting the videos. So just pick one of those. Again, I've got them linked below and join it in another tab or window while we get back to what you clicked on. So get this, there are over 3,500 self-help books published yearly. Boy, I bet you in the last year or two, while we've all been living through these terrifying COVID times, I, I bet you that number has gone up. I bet you there've been more self-help books. So there's all these self-help books along with all of these courses and seminars out there that they, they range in price from $5 to $50,000. And they are all supposedly money back guaranteed to make you a more empowered, productive, and happier version of yourself. So amidst this fury of commercialism, I would like to present the least monetizable piece of self-help advice you'll probably ever hear. And here it is. Ignore your problems, or at least some of them. In that classic movie, Limitless, that we love, at one point, the protagonist says, there are very few problems in this world that $40 million won't fix. Now, uh, your goals achieving them will probably not net you a cool $40 million anytime in the immediate future. But if your goals are fairly ambitious, and I assume that they are, if you follow Limitless Mindset, that's, that's what we're about, you know, then accomplishing them should 
fix a lot of your problems, right? Think about your problems. You don't have to think too hard because problems uh, tend to be top of mind, right? And then think about your goals, think about, think about the things that you want to accomplish. And wouldn't a lot of those problems be fixed by simply accomplishing the ambitious things that you uh, have set out before yourself to work on? Time, money, and resources spent working toward big goals will almost always yield a greater ROI than time, money, and resources spent fixing problems. Let me repeat that because it's kind of important. Time, money, and resources spent working towards big goals will almost always yield a greater return on investment than time, money, and resources spent fixing problems. So you want to structure your goals and vision for life in such a way that your problems are fixed as a byproduct or a side effect of reaching them. So you want to, okay, so let's, let's think about like, like some person that they, they really want to be a musician. Okay. You know how there's a lot of people out there that they just, they really want to be a musician, right? That's a pretty common one, but let's say they got a bunch of health problems. Let's say maybe they got one of these nasty autoimmune conditions. So achieving one's goal of becoming a musician, of achieving notoriety and playing sold out shows and having your songs on the radio, that's not gonna do much to fix the autoimmunity problem, right? So you want to have goals in life and with with dreams, your dreams should not just be a, a product of, of what your fantasies are. Your dreams should be rational. Your goals should align with your strengths, your needs, etc. They should, you know, they should connect to reality in some way. So if you're a person that you can set up your, your ambitions in life, your goals, your aims in such a way that they can fix your problems as a side, pro as a side effect or byproduct, then I say, ignore your problems. So let's get into some examples because history is not impressed by your problems. Few examples. Lance Armstrong winning the Tour de France seven times despite lung, brain, and testicular cancer. That's amazing, isn't it? Stephen Hawking, one of the world's foremost physicists, despite being paralyzed since his 20s by Lou Gehrig's disease. By the way, he had a cute wife back when he was a young guy. You know, a lot of times we think about a nerds not being able to, uh, you know, get a date, right? Maybe they're incels. Well, Stephen Hawking, even when he was a nerdy young guy, he managed to uh, get a pretty cute wife. Good job. Okay, Ludwig von Beethoven. Ludwig von Beethoven. Oh, geez, I'm saying his, his name <laughs> incorrectly. One of the great composers of history, despite going deaf after age 26. There's Bethany Hamilton, a world-class surfer, despite having one of her arms missing due to a shark attack. Yikes, that's why I'm not a huge fan of uh, surfing as a, as, a, as a regular ha hobby. Okay, Howard Hughes. Go watch the Leonardo DiCaprio movie about him sometime when you get a chance. He was an aviation pioneer and one of the wealthiest men in the world, despite chronic pain and OCD. And then finally, JFK, becoming the president of the United States at a young age and saving the world from nuclear holocaust, despite being a constantly and chronically sick man. He suffered from severe chronic back pain, urinary tract infections, colitis, and severe mood swings resulting from his addiction to 
amphetamines. So we'll move on to a personal example. A major problem. Oh boy, this was this is something that ugh, it was just endless struggle, uh, stress, irritation, concern, worrying. A major problem that I faced in my early career as a small business owner back when I was in my mid early 20s was that I didn't have a driver's license and I was facing a very complicated, very complicated, expensive and time consuming process to get it back. And this was due to unpaid parking and uh, speeding tickets. It was it was something really small. It, this was not due to drinking and driving or anything that was really seriously criminal. So as a young entrepreneur, uh, consulting at client sites, doing sales meetings with prospects, coordinating events, doing outside sales, and the all those other activities that fill the day of a small business person, those were pretty challenging to do without a car, at least in the beginning. I walked many miles and spent more time than I care to admit sitting, waiting at cold bus stops and light rail stations. Eventually, all of this taught me to work really efficiently. It taught me to schedule my meetings geographically and do real task batching of any transportation requiring tasks. I'll add something that it taught me to do was to minimize meetings in any kind of, in, in business, especially when you're doing a lot of sales, there's this impulse to do a lot of meetings, to go to people's offices, to go and meet people at coffee shops and not having a car really taught me to get like efficient about things and to do minimization of superfluous meetings. So during this time, during uh, this, this, this was a challenge I faced for several years. And during this time, I strongly reconsidered my decision to go into business for myself. And I would often question whether it would just be better to maybe just go and get a, a more normal kind of job and just wait to get my driver's license back before I devoted myself to this whole entrepreneur thing. But I stayed committed to what my dream, goal, and ambition was. And I ignored my issues with my driver's license and I focused on entrepreneurship. I focused on what my aim was. And eventually the networking and business skills and technical skills that I acquired brought me a deal. It ended up being a barter deal that I did with a attorney there in Denver who was Wow, he this guy really knew his stuff. He really knew how to deal with the courts in regards to driver's license issues. And this guy saved me a huge amount of time, headache, and at least several thousand dollars in getting my driver's license back. This was a case where procrastination paid off. It really was the best thing to do in that in that scenario. If I had put my dreams on hold and gotten a job that I was spending 40 hours a week doing and then another 10 hours on top of that, commuting back and forth via public transportation and then trying to save up some money so I could pay some of these these court costs. Oh my gosh, it it, it really did work out so much better to just focus on what I really wanted to do in life, on what my aim was in life to provide value, and procrastinate on my problems. So at this point, you're of course asking yourself, should I be procrastinating? And big caveat here. So 
the procrastination. It, using procrastination selectively and discerningly is an advanced kind of mindset thing. This is for people who can really think critically and analytically and take into an extreme procrastinating on the long term things that can be detrimental. You can think of a person who ignores a serious health problem that kills them before they accomplish their goals. Shouldn't have procrastinated on that. There are times when small problems can grow into bigger problems. And there are times when small problems stay small and can be stamped out by accomplishing your goals. How do you know the difference on this? Well, you want to get some expert opinions on the matter first. So knowledgeable doctors, attorneys, authors, gurus on the internet potentially, or consultants that are out there are often willing to give a free or very affordable initial consultation or opinion on whatever problem you're considering just blowing off and procrastinating on. So I would say that unless your problems present a health risk to you or significantly hold you back from accomplishing your goals, I'd be more biased towards saying just blow these things off or find a way to delegate them to someone else. You know, you want to think about what you want to think about what are the things where mistakes made, where problems tend to metastasize. So, there's a couple of areas where you really don't want to let where where, where problems have this amazing capacity to snowball. So this is probably most commonly with health stuff. It can often be with your interpersonal relationships. It can be with uh, finances. If you've got if you've got a credit card debt that's going to be accruing interest. If you've got a legal situation, legal situations uh, especially can be really thorny in this area. But with a lot of kinds of problems, they will stay small if you ignore them. So if you've got big enough ambitions that are somewhat realistic ambitions where making progress towards these things is going to give you the capacity to just squash your problems like a bug, then I'm a big fan of the procrastination approach. So I'll finish with an introspective question for you. At your funeral, are people going to praise you for always paying your bills on time, responding to emails promptly, always getting your car's oil changed when it needed to be, getting your yearly checkup at the dentist on time, or getting good grades in school? Doubtful, right? At your funeral, they will praise you for taking risks, and going for the big goals that were important to you. So give some thought to that. If you've got some problems that you're just thinking about ignoring and procrastinating, well, shoot me a uh, email or shoot me a message on social media with a, a brief description of what you're dealing with. And it may or may not be something that I'm qualified to give an opinion on, but I wouldn't mind giving you kind of a a private sounding board on those sorts of things. I'm Jonathan with Limitless Mindset. Looking forward to a continued conversation with you.